it's time for the latest edition of What's the Word, the radio news show that gets you up to date on Area 1 transformation and how it'll affect you. I'm Army Private Joe Alamon, and now here's the host of What's the Word, Mr. Frank Fisher of the USAG Red Cloud Public Affairs Office. Good afternoon, Mr. Good Fisher. Good afternoon. Thanks, PFC Alamon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of What's the Word, the news program that keeps you up to date on Area 1's transformation and how it'll affect you. Today, we're taking an up-to-date look at a topic we've covered in two earlier broadcasts, That's the big effort that kicked off today to help a very large body of 2nd Infantry Division soldiers go through out-processing before leaving Area 1. They're members of the division's 1st Armored Brigade combat team, and their brigade will inactivate this summer. Replacing it will be rotational brigades that will come to Korea nine months at a time. But as for the 1ABCT soldiers, they'll either leave Korea or go to new assignments in other parts of Korea. Well, where is all this out-processing happening, and how will it affect traffic and services in our Area 1 community? We'll take a good look at those things, and we'll also hear about tomorrow's grand reopening of the Gateway Club on Camp Casey, and why that's such a big deal for the quality of life of Area 1 well into the future. But before we talk about those things with today's guests, let me give you a quick rundown on just what this out-processing surge is and why it's happening. The surge will happen mainly on Camp Casey and Camp Hovey. Soldiers will come to a central clearing place. It's been set up inside the Camp Casey Community Activity Center, and that's where the bulk of their clearing will happen. They'll also be going to the central issue facility on Camp Hovey, the facility's better known as the CIF. Well, at the CIF, they'll have to turn in certain items of military gear, and they'll have to make sure it's clean and dry at the time they hand it over the counter. Here to give us the word on the out-processing surge is the first of today's guests. He is Mr. Robert Clifton, civilian misconduct officer with the U.S. Army Garrison Red Cloud in Area 1's Directorate of Human Resources. And, of course, between interview segments, as always, my broadcast partner, AFN's Army Private Joe Alamon will play the music you've come to count on from AFN KC the Eagle. Mr. Clifton, welcome to What's the Word. Ah, thanks. Thanks to be here. Let me ask first, how will soldiers get to this central clearing point, the, the Community Activity Center on Camp Casey, and what effects, if any, might this have on the ability of people in the community to get around on foot or by vehicle? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, right now, there are not any specific buses that, that are taking the soldiers to the Community Activity Center for the, the central clearing point. So what they're relying on is the normal shuttles, and so those will obviously have increased traffic on the buses themselves. So, And then there will also be a lot of folks taking taxis and then some walking. So I was over there this afternoon, and uh, there is an increase in uh, taxis pulling in and out of there. There's an increase of foot traffic. So uh, and and the buses obviously they're they're always pretty full. But so if you're if you're if you're using the shuttle buses, be aware that you might want to you know plan ahead, leave a little earlier so that you can get to your destination or your appointments on time because there are a lot of soldiers that are trying to clear at this time. So then what we really asked though, and I, I saw this when I was over there, is just slow down. There there's soldiers crossing. Most most are all using the crosswalks, but. You know, there's people getting off buses, and there's just a lot of congestion going on right in front of the CAC. So let's all be safe. Let's take care of our community, and uh, let's get all our soldiers in and out process uh, the way they should. So that's all. Very important point, sure. Here's PFC Aleman with the break. All right, now we got some more music coming your way. Stick around. Here's Feel This Moment by Pitbull. But stay tuned because we got more What's the Word coming your way. You just heard Willie Nelson with On the Road Again. I thought I'd put a throwback in there for you. And uh, welcome back to What's the Word. And I'm here with Mr. Fisher. Mr. Fisher, how you doing? Doing fine. And I know we got some few more questions to, uh, to partake in. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Sure. Thanks, PFC Aleman. Hello again. We're looking at the big outprocessing of 1st Armored Brigade Combat Team soldiers that has begun today and will be underway through the coming weeks. And uh, let me ask our guest, Mr. Robert Clifton of the Garrison's Human uh, D- Directorate, of, I'm sorry, Directorate of Human Resources, uh, the very next question, and that is, Mr. Clifton, if we have, let's say, a soldier who's at the Community Activity Center on Camp Casey, the big central processing point, and uh, he or she is at one of the stations, and the people who are staffing the, s- the station say to him or to her, Oh, sorry, This our records here are showing that you still haven't paid a bill. You need to take care of that. And the soldier 
thinks, well, or says, no, I, I'm sure I paid that or I thought I did, what advice do you have for people who find themselves in that situation? Okay, sure. Yeah, we so far we haven't seen a lot of that. But uh, if, if it happens to to soldier, they should just, uh, you know, work with us. You'll be asked to step out of line uh, because we don't want to hold up the rest of the folks that are going through. And just understand that uh, be patient. Um, the folks are working from a remote location. They're not at their normal where, you know, they would normally be people out processing, walking in and, and foot traffic that way. So they just need time to research the problem and to work with that soldier and figure out what it is and eventually get them cleared. But so far it hasn't been an issue. So, right. so patience is the patience key. Patience is the key, yes. Right. And let's also talk about the cable TV office and how this transformation, this out-processing surge is going to affect their service. Okay, now that's, that's a good one to use because the, the, the cable TV office is one of those ones that has uh, very minimum manning. So they're over at the CAC and they are supporting this, uh, this clearing effort. So I've talked with the gentleman there and he said that, you know, if you still have your cable box... Make sure you bring it with you when you go to the CAC. Otherwise, they, they can't out-process you if you haven't returned the equipment to them. So for the most part, they're over at the CAC uh, working, working this clearing effort. So uh, again, if you still have your box, a lot don't. Most of them have already turned it in and, and, and they're where they're supposed to be. But if they have the box with them now and they're very, very close to their departure date, please bring, uh, bring the box with them so they can clear at that time. And also, uh, we've talked in previous broadcasts here about uh, how various agencies, organizations would have their staff working at the Community Activity Center helping the soldiers clear. And you just gave us an example of that involving the, uh, the cable TV people. And uh, what about, let's talk a little bit about that. Who are some of the organizations, the agencies that will be there? There's a lot of folks out there supporting this effort. We've got people from the, uh, the DBIDS, the Army Substance Abuse Program, Ration Control, Education Services, LG DACOM, and SK Telecom, uh, the ITO, CTO, Housing, ACS, Library folks, Cable TV, as we mentioned earlier, Finance, and then finally, the final step, we've got the Military uh, Personnel Division. Those folks are there to, to support this effort and get our soldiers cleared. And for, <clears throat> for listeners who may never have gone through this process, for soldiers who may, have, may be on their first assignment and haven't had to do this yet, what we're talking about is all of those organizations having people re represented there at the central clearing point so that as the soldier clears, he or she stops at various stations and people from those various offices are there to do the administrative things, the paperwork, and uh, get the person cleared. Is it, that correct? Exactly. And a lot of them, uh, for many of the stations that are pre-clearing, they're, they're, they're uh, out processing paperwork, their checklists, will have names already on there that they were pre-cleared in, uh, in, in the ISM. And uh, so they're just really just stopping by, we're checking their name to make sure that they were pre-cleared and moving them on. Now, if they weren't, a uh, good example of ration control. All we do is take down a little bit of information because the ration control isn't a big issue for soldiers without that are unaccompanied. Uh, we take down a little information, we sign it, we stamp it, and then just move on. There's the, uh, you know, it takes about five seconds. And as I understand it, that's one of the big benefits of this pre-clearing that was uh, put into place for this big surge about processing. By using that system, it spares people. Tell us, tell us what the benefit of that is. Absolutely. It, what it does is it, it, it gives an opportunity to service providers to go into the system prior to the soldier getting those installation clearing papers and clearing them for that specific place, or that education services, libraries, things like that. So then the soldier only has a few actual foot stops that they have to go to. So they're already pre-cleared. They pull down their paperwork and they're ready to streamline uh, and go through the process. So potentially a huge saving in time and effort for the soldier. <laughs> Absolutely, and for the, and the service providers. It, it eliminates a lot of foot traffic that are just coming in to our process. Well, thank you very much. Back to PFC Alamon with the break. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get you back into the tunes. Here is Miley Cyrus with Can't Be Tamed. That was Matchbox 20 with our song, and you're listening to AFN KC The Eagle, where we serve you America's best. And not only that, it is What's the Word, the radio news show that gets you the up-to-date on what Area 1's transformation. And, of course, our host, Mr. Fisher. 
Thanks, BFC Aleman. Hello again. We've been talking about the big out-processing surge for soldiers from the 1ABCT. That's the 1ABCT. And how it'll affect the Area 1 community. Now let's look at tomorrow's big reopening of the Gateway Club and why the club is important to Area 1's future. Here to talk about that with us is Ms. Denise Von Vicky, NAF Support Chief, Deputy Director, with the Garrison's Directorate of Family and Morale, Welfare and Recreation. Ms. Von Vicky, many of our listeners already know that the Gateway Club will reopen tomorrow, that it's had a big renovation, and that an exciting uh, concert is planned for the occasion. I don't think there are too many people in Area 1 who don't know that now. Uh, But they may not know what makes the Gateway Club so important to the life of the Area 1 community. Tell us, please, what's important about the Gateway? What's special about it? Well, the Gateway opens up, and it's going to be now the renovated new hub of the community. It's going to be for old and young, um, for everybody to come in and then meet us and be part of the community center hub where everybody can be there your your morale is there it's the social place to come and you're going to find that throughout we have brand new lighting we have wonderful new food menus the interior has all been upgraded so for the future it will be the only club in area one and therefore we want you to get on the groundbreaking and know what your club is all about so that when you leave us you'll pass that to your next soldier down the line of what a wonderful place it is for you to come in and be a part of the community And the uh, reason that the Gateway will eventually be the club in Area 1 is that as Area 1 transforms, uh, gradually installations will be closing, the clubs on those installations will be closing, and so in more ways than one, the Gateway will truly be the social hub. Is that right? Correct. That is it. And that's why we wanted to t- start the ball rolling with this first facelift and, and make it even better. And we have more projects coming down the line as the years go forward. We're going to meet the expectations, if not exceed those expectations, for, the, for our community hub to be the place that's happening. That's great. And let me also ask you about, uh, for those few who may not know yet, what t- tell us please about tomorrow's big grand reopening and what you've got lined up for that. Wow, we have a lot going on. We start our pre-party. Our pre-party starts at 3 to 5. That has free hot dogs, um, hamburgers out on the front patio. If you haven't noticed, we put those great sales out there, orange. We have live music coming in um, starting at 3 to 5. Grand opening cutting of the ribbon is at 5 for everyone. Following that, we're going to walk you through the building, get you a tour. There's appetizers. There's free beverages. Um, Another live band will start at 5 o'clock and play through 7. We open the patio out there to the Gary Sinise. If you haven't heard, Gary Sinise and Lieutenant Dan Band will be in our back parking lot. They will play from 7 to 9, a little after 9. And the party doesn't start because we're right back inside that club with another live band and a DJ with all of our new disco lighting, our great environment, new cocktails out there for everybody, new menu in the, in the snack bar area, and the renovation package is just to die for you. You're going to find that the brick on the wall in the new game room, everything that we have going on, we're doing and more for when the, the future comes. So uh, we're looking at... Adding on to arcade games, the old school games are going to come in there. We have a shuffleboard coming through. Some dart tournaments going to start. We've got brand new pool tables put into the place. So, again, this is going to be the most happening place with themed nights. Um, we got a few things up our sleeve. I'm not going to quite give everything away, but we do have some good food challenges to go with our themed nights. So uh, you just got to stay tuned and come out and find out all that we have. And I'm intrigued by what you said about the Lieutenant Dan Band. Did you say they start at 7 p.m.? They do. They start at 7 p.m. But you said that there are also other bands that will be performing before that. Correct. We have two that start the day off. We have a 3 to 5 band. And then we have a seven to se- or 5 to 7 band. And then Lieutenant Dan. And then we finish up the night with a- another band that plays out again starting at 9.30. And they last till 1 p.m. 1 a.m. 1 a.m. And it is Friday after all. It is Friday. Gary Sinise, a lot of people in Area 1 are very excited about him and what one hears all the time when people do talk about him, as they've been for many weeks now in anticipation of tomorrow, is that he's not only a talented actor, award-winning actor, but that he's uh, 
a real friend of the American military. Is Absolutely. that is that right? Absolutely. I firsthand know this, um, being a being a proud parent of a of a hundred percent handed uh, wounded soldier. He has been there for my family, and he's going to be there for a lot of many um, wounded families out there. So Gary Sneeze and his foundation do wonderful things, not just for the military troops, but for the police departments and fire departments and for VFW. So um, come out, support us, support Gary Sneeze and Lieutenant Dan Band, and have a wonderful evening. Thanks very much. Back to PFC Alaman with the break. I don't know about you, but I'm very excited to be out there for the grand reopening. You guys are starting it off phenomenal, especially with the uh, Lieutenant Band Dan. That's just going to be a great time. So definitely get out there tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned. We've got more music coming your way. And right now we got Savage Garden with Truly Madly Deeply here on AFN Casey the Eagle. That was Lay Me Down by the Dirty Heats here on AFN Casey the Eagle. Thanks for staying with us here as we're in our last segment of What's the Word with uh, me, Army Private Joe Alamon, and, of course, our host, Mr. Frank Fisher. Thanks, PFC Alamon. Hello again. And if you're just joining us, we've been looking today at the big out-processing surge that got underway today in Area 1, and we looked at tomorrow's reopening of the Gateway Club on Camp Casey. Uh, here's a recap of what we heard today with our guests about the, uh, we'll talk first about the out-processing surge. We said that that's going on in two places mainly uh, in the Casey Enclave. One of them is the Camp Casey Community Activity Center, and that's the central clearing point where a very great many soldiers of the 1st Armored Brigade Combat Team will in the coming weeks be going to do their, the bulk anyway, of their clearing so that they can PCS uh, from Korea or in some cases to other parts of Korea. Another uh, big venue for this surge of getting so many soldiers out processed is on Camp Hovey at the uh, CIF, the Central Issue Facility, and that's where soldiers will go with certain items of military gear and turn it in. And uh, the CIF staff has uh, reminded, asked us to remind the community that uh, of soldiers that uh, their gear will need to be, of course, clean and dry before turn-in. And I happen to have been talking with a soldier yesterday who is not with the 1ABCT, but who had to uh, turn in an item of gear at the CIF. He's not part of this big out-processing surge, but he told me that... Uh, gee, you know, I, I took it to the CIF and they said that it's not quite clean enough. So here, he, there he was, holding on to it, getting ready to, to go somewhere last night, I guess, to the barracks and work on getting it clean so that it'll be acceptable to the CIF. Our very own Sergeant Bennett had the same uh, issue. Is that so? Tried turning in some uh, items and it was not uh, as clean as they needed to be. So definitely, uh, I, I uh, recommend that you guys do as best you can to get those clean for them. There it is. I want to hold back some more time by not having them clean. So That's right. So that's two people known to us right here in the studio. And uh, so if you are one of the soldiers who will be doing this, take that seriously, of course, and make sure that your gear is clean and dry before you bring it in. Another thing that uh, we heard today is that uh, d around, especially in the vicinity of the Community Activity Center at Camp Casey, the CAC, there will be quite a few shuttle buses. There will be an increase in, in traffic, vehicular traffic. A lot of soldiers pulling up in taxis to go do their out-processing. Others piling off the shuttle bus uh, to get there. And so there will be a lot of uh, buses, a lot of taxis, and a lot of people um, coming and going outside the CAC. So especially if you're in a vehicle, if you're driving in that area, please remember to uh, take it slow, be extra careful, and uh, if you're on foot and have any appointments or other plans that are likely to take you through that area where there is expected to be a good deal of traffic congestion, it's good to plan ahead, take that into account, and be ready so that you're more likely to uh, get to where you need to go on time. Also, if you happen to be a cable TV customer, you're advised to, by all means, bring your cable box with you to the CAC and get that turned in. Be ready to hand that over when you go to out process. And finally, before I hand back to PFC Alamon, if you are going through the, the processing, the clearing process at the CAC and someone, one of the people staffing a table says to you, 
oh, gee, it looks like you have not paid a bill, or if you run into some other glitch that uh, you think might cause you delay, the word is be patient. Keep calm, keep your head steady as she goes. They'll work with you. They'll probably ask you to step out of the line, and they'll listen to you and do what they need to do to help you to get the things squared away that so, so that you're good to go, good to clear, and good to PCS. This has been What's the Word, and it airs every other Thursday at 3 p.m. Our next broadcast will be June 11th, two weeks from now, from 3 to 4 p.m. here on AFN Casey. I'm Frank Fisher of the Area 1 Public Affairs Office, and I've been your host for What's the Word, handing back now to my What's the Word broadcast partner, AFN Casey DJ, Army Private Joe Aleman. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Here's PFC Aleman. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. I'm Army Private Joe Aleman, and that's... Uh, like Mr. said, thanks for joining us, and uh, that's it for today's What's the Word. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and of course, stay tuned for the next one.